thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you all for coming. So I'll be talking to you about our work in mapping code duplicates on GitHub. And before I start, I'd like to say that we are originally uh, PL people, that's programming languages, and our main goal was to analyze basically analyze large source code repositories and mine them for really interesting properties about programs. But before one can do such a thing, there is the need to actually build an infrastructure to deal with such a large amounts of data. And all the basic properties of the data you have downloaded and are going to analyze should be known. And we were thinking that the best way to accomplish this would be to ask ourselves really simply, sorry, really simple research question that we will start with. And while answering it, we'll build the infrastructure and we'll gain some basic understanding. And the question we've chosen was the very basic one, and that is how many duplication is there on GitHub? We've chosen this question because answering it gives us a way to avoid selection bias or in the cases that we cannot avoid it, at least understand it and be able to reason within it. And this thing is so important that I'm actually going to start with what can we do for you already and we put our paper is accompanied by an artifact and we've worked real hard on the artifact so that it is actually usable not just for us but to everyone who wishes to do a large-scale analysis and what the artifact does is if you are lucky enough that your analysis would be in one of the languages we've analyzed we can immediately tell you if you give us the projects you are going to analyze or the files you are going to analyze. We will basically give you what is your selection bias. We will analyze it for the duplicities and we'll tell you a bunch of other important data. Also, if you are a bit less lucky, that is if you are working on a language that we haven't worked so far, we've made our artifact fully automated and really easy for you to extend for any language you might be interested in. So, with that, the rest of the talk will be very briefly about how we do what we did and then I'll focus on some of the more interesting and hopefully also funny observations we've come along. So, without further ado, we've analyzed, well, we've selected four languages. These were Java, C and C++, which for the purpose of this talk we are grouping into one bucket, Python and JavaScript. For these languages, we've downloaded every single GitHub repository as of the end of 2016. We've excluded forks, because forks obviously are duplicates. And this graph just shows you what were the percentages, sorry, what were the proportions of the projects downloaded. Java and JavaScript were by far more popular ones with 1.8 and 1.5 million projects. C and C++ and Python were slightly less popular. In terms of files, which is the outer circle, the inner circle is still the project, so that you can compare the ratios. In terms of files, JavaScript dominated with 262 million files, and that is more than the rest of the three languages combined. So, now, if we were to actually analyze this and ideally produce a, some kind of list that would give you pairs of files that are identical or similar, then in case of JavaScript, which is the worst, we have 262 million, sorry, 262 million files. And if we were to compare them naively, that means compare each one with other, and it would lead to this amount of comparisons. English is not my native language, so I'm not even trying to read it. But assuming that each comparison will take 10 milliseconds, we'll end up with something that is close to 22 million years. Fortunately, there are better ways to do it. And just very briefly, the way we've selected to do is, we start with files. And what we do, we read a single file and we obtain a hash of its contents. And then we use this hash to very quickly determine whether two files are completely identical. That is, if their hashes are identical. And if they are not, only then we progress to later stages in which we tokenize the file. And by tokenization, I mean we basically remove comments, we remove white space and we remove separators. Separators are language defined, and usually it comes down to operators and punctuation marks. This, then we sum the, to sorry, then we count the tokens, and you end up for each file with something like this. And this is then fed into Sorcerer CC. 
Sorcery is a previous work from people at UC Irvine. We are using it in the purpose of this study. And Sorcerer CC takes the token of files, crunches, and returns you a list of similar files, basically the thing we wanted. Sorcerer also employs a lot of very clever tricks to actually make this much faster than the originally advertised 2 million years. And it does really good job. Sorcerer CC on JavaScript ran a mere few days. So that was great. We thought we'll build the infrastructure, we do the downloading, a couple of weeks will be finished. But, as I said at the beginning, we are PL people and we were completely unprepared for the amount of infrastructure that needed to be built. We were also completely unprepared for the task of actually trusting your data. Because before you present something at the conference, you ideally would believe in it yourself. And making sure that what we computed is truly what is there on GitHub was actually not an easy task. So, we did this. It took us quite some time. I mean, it's better than the 22 million years, but it was substantial. But now we are ready to present it. So, in terms of file level duplication, we figured out that across all four languages, almost 80% of them were identical copies of the remaining 20%. Furthermore, from the remaining 20%, 9% of these were determined by Sorcerer CC as being similar to the remaining you need 12%, and we call these originals. So, this is for all languages combined. When we split it into different languages, we see that Java is the best, in a sense, with over 30% of its files being originals, and less than half percent of them, I stress this, less than half, sorry, less than half of the data set were identical clones. C and C++ and Python are roughly similar. There is 13 and 19% of the original files. Roughly half that are the similar files and the remaining is identical to the rest. JavaScript is the elephant in the room. It's 3% original files, slightly 3% being similar and over 94% of the entire files we downloaded for JavaScript were completely identical to the remaining 6%. So, you might be thinking, I mean, this is, we all know duplication exists, but honestly, we did not expect it to exist this much. So, one thing that we thought is perhaps this only, like, a lot of the files are very small, trivial files even. And maybe this only concerns these really tiny files, like empty file and friends, which is empty file with a single white space. So, what we did is we excluded these files. And this is the outer circle. I am again keeping the inner circle so that you can make comparisons. And now for the outer circle, we removed any files that had less than 50 tokens. So 50 tokens, that is removing comments, removing white space, removing the open. That's actually a reasonably large file. And as you can see, the proportions, they almost did not change, right? So in the next step, let's look at the languages one by one. So. In Java, we found out that most of the identical files, as actually was true for all the other languages as well, is dominated by popular frameworks. In JavaScript, sorry, in Java, this was Action Bar Sherlock, it was Cordova, and it was OKHTTP. Then, what we further did is we looked at the similar files and we classified the similar files, well, we randomly sampled 20 pairs out of the similar files and we manually classified them into three categories. We classified them into intentional clones, and this will be the normal control C, control V, then do some changes. Then the unintentional clones, those are basically things that are similar, but were obtained different way. This is, for instance, when you have a different version of a library, right? And finally, we were interested in auto-generated clones. This is sort of similar, but to make matters worse, this has been generated by some tool. So a lot of the boilerplating code usually comes from the auto-generated. So in case of Java, it was 60% generated. Most of it went to Apache Axis and then various Android and Java frameworks. We found two unintentional clones and there was intentional clones. And intentional clones in Java, we've seen both inter-project and intra-project, one of them being for educational purposes, whereas you have the solution and, sorry, you have the question and then you have solutions of students all of it got pushed to GitHub, or 
copies of files where similar functionality was required in different places in the project. When we moved to C and C++, most famous libraries were Boost and FreeType. And if we then look further and we split the similar files into, again, the same categories, we found out that in C++, auto generation was not that much of an issue. We found only three of them and most of it went from Qt. We found a couple of unintentional ones, mostly different versions of libraries, and we found quite a lot of the intentional ones. And this was basically people copy-pasted entire file, entire functionality, sometimes even including comments, and they changed it ever so slightly so they worked with their own version of code. In terms of Python, the picture is roughly similar. The difference with Python is Python was like truly dominated by Django. So out of the 20 samples, 17 of them were auto-generated, all of them belonged to Django. The other one, the intentional ones, two of them were unit tests and one of them was a Django database SQL scheme. Then we finally get to JavaScript. In JavaScript, we observed greater variety in the identical copies. So there was actually a lot of libraries we've seen. It took us a few moments to realize that all of these come, well, all of these have one thing similar, and that thing is they are all Node.js packages. So it almost looks like instead of analyzing JavaScript, we only analyze Node.js. So we started digging deeper, and we were hoping that actually the files themselves, the names and the paths will give us a clue. So, and very soon it popped out that node modules are the single most popular prefix of a path of JavaScript files. So, in Node.js there is npm, which is Node.js package manager, and if you have a, if you have a project and you happen to use Node.js, most likely you are using npm, and if your project depends on other packages, npm will download these packages for you so that you can it will store the source code of these packages into node modules. So, in a sense, and then of course what happens, some people actually, you know, for various reasons, include or forget to exclude node modules from their Git repositories. So, what we want to do is we want to exclude these, of course, as much as we did with forks. Because, I mean, those are duplicates. There's no question about it. So, how many are there? This thing shows the amount of files on GitHub in JavaScript. And you can see JavaScript has been enjoying exponential popularity. It went all the way to 251 million files at the end of 2016. Sadly, only 10.1 million of these were the or well original files. So if we remove NPM, and because I actually, before I show you the graph, I must point out, we've downloaded 1.8 million files. Out of these, couple use Node.js. Out of these, only 5,000 included the NPM files, the Node modules directory, right? If we remove all of these files, we end up with 30% of the data set, roughly 75 million files. So, knowing this, we can get back to JavaScript. This is JavaScript with all files included. Now, again, for comparison, the outer circle is excluding the Node the node files. And here the picture is slightly more similar to the other languages. It is still dominated. This time it's dominated by jQuery, which was over 50% of the most frequently copied files. And it's followed by a couple other very famous frameworks. So when we look in the similar files, we've observed again, most of them were auto-generated. This time it was Angular, JS, Grunt, Yeoman, and Express. Some of them were unintentional. Again, these were various versions of famous libraries. And we found one intentional clone, which was just a file that has been renamed and then one token. So, we also, I mean, what I've shown you so far should make it clear that there is a lot of duplication on GitHub. But we were hoping there are some patterns. Specifically, we were interested and we asked ourselves the question whether you know, there are certain kinds of projects, certain like uh, better quality projects that will duplicate a little less than the rest. And our idea for that was that if you have a project and that project has a lot of files and those files are actively developed, that means the project also has a lot of commits into the repository, 
more likely this project will be a little less copied than the other project. It will contain a little less percentage of duplication. So we'll show this on this graph, which is a variation of heat map. And on the horizontal axis, we have number of files in the project and it's logarithmic. On the vertical axis, we have number of commits, again, logarithmic. Actually, put the tiles in. And tiles basically summarize for all projects that fit in the tile, what is the percentage of copied files in that particular project. And this is, this is all fake data. This is just to show what we expected, right? And we would expect that the projects that have a lot of files and almost no comments would get, would be, would have more copies than the other projects. So, this is how it actually looks. This is a clone map for C++. And just so that everyone can see, this is a magnifying glass to the right corner. And it's well above 90 in most of the cases. So almost all are copies, even in C++. I mean, this is not JavaScript, this is C++. So if we dig a bit deeper, we see the, this area is nice. This is what we've expected. The more files, the more commits, the better it is. The area down here is so expected. These are the projects that have a lot of files, almost zero commits, so most likely it has all been copied. This thing is unfortunate, but we can easily attribute it to the fact that copying happens, it happens a lot. This thing up there is a bit weird. Those are projects that have a lot of files, a lot of commits, yet they are almost exclusively clones. This happens, for instance, when people do not really use the forking mechanism and they just clone and then push. But this thing is really weird. Those are projects that have one file and tens of thousands of commits. So, yeah, tens of thousands. So we tried to look at them a bit. And we found this. And we've, we've anonymized it so that we are not pointing fingers. And first, sanity checks. Sanity checks are important. There is one CPP file, right? And there is uh, 34,000 commits into that one file. Then we looked at the commit messages. I mean, this is a weird commit message. Like, I'm not the best developer myself, but this is super weird. So we dig a bit deeper, and then we found this, again, anonymized. And if you can read it, this repo claims to make you a rock star programmer. <laughs> so educational material, right? We scrolled a bit further. And it gets better than that. It makes you rockstar programmer under two minutes. <laughs> uh, that, that's amazing, right? Thanks. So then we figured out how it does so. It basically creates a project that has one file in the language you want to rock on. And it randomly generates some commits to it. And it gives you this lovely history of whatever was being pushed on GitHub. The project is very verbose on testimonials and how great it is. There are testimonials from Google, from famous people in the industry. Like, we do believe these are fakes, we hope. The scary thing is, if we go back, this project is very popular. <laughs> right? And there, there are derivative works. For instance, this guy here, again anonymized. He's, exp well, look at it, 67,000 comments. And he is expert in almost all languages known to men, <laughs> including HTML. The funny part is the C++, it's not even a valid program. It would not compile. <laughs> so that said, we're back to the other languages. I'll just show the heat maps. It's roughly, it's roughly what we were expected. The two things I would point out, it seems that, by, it seems that Java, the clone, the clone duplicate ratio does not really seem to depend on number of commits, only size of projects. The other thing is people really want to be Rockstar, C and C++ programmers and Python programmers. They are not that much interested in Java and JavaScript. So with that, there is a lot more in the paper. I'll just list it here. I'll be happy to take any questions either now or offline. And with that, I'll thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.